Hey guys, welcome back to Puffalato, and welcome back to Cafe Enchante. We are here on Eel's Root. Um, we got some character lattes, which was interesting to say the least. Um, and, but Eel did a pretty good job, I think, just being in the cafe around other people, not making a huge mess. So let's get right into it. The bustle of town echoed from the distance, along with the lively voices of children. Combined with the fair weather and my fatigue, naturally... <sighs> A yawn spontaneously walled up from within. Whenever sleepy thoughts entered my head, oftentimes that would be it. I started to nod off to sleep. <laughs> Mm. At Eel's gentle prompting, my field of vision dimmed further and further. My cheek leaned over and touched his shoulder, and just before I passed out... Oh god. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> From Eel's throat, a clear, beautiful singing voice spread throughout the park. It lured me into a world of slumber. Uh, uh? As my thoughts began to dull, my field cut in and out. Why was I here? What was I doing? Unable to find the answer, my consciousness flittered between light and darkness. Oh yeah. Good morning. <laughs> A soft-spoken voice lifted me from my heavy slumber. Uh <laughs> Thank you, Eel. I think I dozed off for too long. Right? Or so I was about to ask. Within my field of sight, there were several people collapsed to the ground. I was dumbstruck. <gasps> well, what? what's going on? Right before our eyes, men and women fainted throughout the park. The old man sitting on the bench next to us was hunched over like he had gone limp with closed eyes. That wasn't all. Even the dogs that were being walked and the birds which moments earlier chirped in the trees had fallen to the ground. In other words, for some reason, every person and animal within the park lost consciousness. A bizarre situation, to put it lightly. God, ew, no! Th th this is bad. We need to call an ambulance. I hurriedly pull out my smartphone to make a call, but... Huh? Eel nonchalantly interrupted me. As he said, when I took a closer look at the unconscious people, one was snoring away, resting comfortably with his tongue sticking out. Ew. In the grass? <laughs> um, Eel? A cold sweat dripped down my back. Don't tell me this was... Hi. I spoke too soon. Eel fucked it up. あなたがよく眠れるようにと行ったのですが、どうやら範囲内にいた彼らにも影響してしまったようですね。時間が経てば自然と目を覚ましますし、何も問題はないかと。I <笑> I screwed up! I was at my wit's end, ready to scream. Within no time? Wait, how long will that be? How did Kotone wake up then? That's practically a coma! Then, from outside the park, people gather in large numbers, noticing the mass of people who were rendered asleep. <sighs> what, what should we do? Today's top story, an entire park has inexplicably fallen into a coma. <laughs> I was beginning to see the headlines playing on TV in the future. 
But I couldn't just leave these people in their current state, so I thought it best to call an ambulance. As I grabbed my smartphone out of my pocket, two familiar figures drew out from the crowd and began to approach us. Oh no! Uh, Monsieur Rindo! Ew! Ew, are you too dumb? Ah! That's not what I said. I said, I'm a Rindo seemed a bit flustered. He motioned with his eyes towards us and Mazir, urging him to say something. <laughs> Even with my ears covered, the shrill voice pierced through my head. After several seconds, all of the slumbering people and animals began to wake, one by one, in confusion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Il was taken by total surprise. All he could muster as a response was a troubled tilt of his head at Rindo. Il, how do you not know that it's not okay to make people pass out? Like, oh. With the uproar in the park settled, we all managed to return to Enchante. However, Il sat poised in his chair with all of the other regulars encircled around him. Rindo, too, is at the center, slamming his fist onto the table as he interrogated Eel. That was me slamming my fist on the table for him, but anyways. Hmm. He's not even listening! <laughs> After receiving the instruction, Karya, who was bent over in a seat a few tables over, ran his pen through his homework assignment. So, Janai Desho. Sakihoda Karindo, Nase Sokoma de Ikido de Runo desu? Il's lack of concern prompted Rindo to grab him angrily by the temples, forcing Il to look up at him. With a look of indifference, Kanas cut into the conversation. Il, first of all, as instructed, Il reflected back to that time. Kikeba それはその。そう。そうなのか。No,カナス。いや、違えだろ。I <laughs> saw Mazir straining a smile at this interaction, so I asked him a question. Um, Mazir, does Il's magic work whenever he sings? As I recalled time in which 
as I recalled a time, I think they're missing an A, but as I recalled a time in which we walked in the coolness of the evening light, Eel was singing, which sprang forth a miracle of sorts. Mm. I see. So, this doesn't always happen. That's good. Well, maybe not good. それと、いるの法術は決して歌が必須というわけではないようなのだがな。それでも天使が法術を行使する上で歌は重要な儀式となるようでな。より上質な効果を望む、もしくは大規模な術を使う。そういった場合に用いるらしい。It's like it's like a choir or something. In other words, by performing a divine hymn, he strengthens his spell's power. Akai? What a thought-provoking concept. Oh, I get it. <clears throat> Wait, if it was a prayer, does that mean... Eel had prayed for me to rest, which resulted in his powerful lullaby? But it's simply, the cause of the disturbance was my own existence? I became dizzy with anticipation and began to sweat bullets in my head. I'm surprised that Rendo like grabbed Eel by the head, being like, You need to look at me. Like, <laughs> Before I knew it, the cafe's usual calm atmosphere was disturbed. Huh? Uh, everyone, wait a second. Are you already done with this conversation? Everyone gave me a puzzled tilt of the head in response to my question and blinked curiously. I know things thankfully worked out, but a lot of people were involved. Maybe you should get Eel to understand a little more about how dangerous it could have been. You know, like, shouldn't you explain it a little more to him? I turned my gaze once again to Eel, the one at the center of this. His eyes were closed as he was lost in song. There was no mistaking it. He had no idea how dangerous that situation could have been. Not the slightest grasp. Uh, explain or scold him? Well, it, it's kind of like... The way I think about it is like... It's like a, a dog. Like, if... Not saying that Eel's a dog, okay? Hold on, hold on! Don't get mad at me! <laughs> but if... You explain something, like, if you scold a dog, and the dog doesn't know any better, then the dog's just gonna be like, you're just yelling at me for no reason. But if you explain to the dog, like, no, you can't do that, and you continue to explain, then the dog will remember, right? I think that's how it works. It's the same with kids, too. You can't just, like, I don't know. I would, I would say explain. Let's just say explain. I don't want to be screaming at Eel anyways. Just because it worked out in the end, I don't think we can leave it there. He needs to know why you were scolding him and why his actions were problematic. We should explain it thoroughly and talk about it in specifics until Eel understands. Surprisingly, Eel responded affirmatively to my suggestion. I cleared my throat and took a breath. <gasps> With everyone's effort, we can make sure that, no matter what Eel does, we can trust him to make the right call. However, we shouldn't miss an opportunity to teach him, not without our help. Eel needs to be able to think and make decisions for himself. We should encourage that. After all, in the end, the one to face the consequences and suffer will be Eel himself. 
Honestly speaking, my guess is that Eel will write this off as only being prohibited from singing in the park. I began to explain in great detail. Everyone had a surprised look on their face, but they seemed to understand. Alright, Agnes, that could have been worded a little nicer, but. Even so, despite saying that, it occurred to me that changing Eel's pattern of thought would be quite the challenge. For now, I decided to explain to him about this specific disturbance. Um, Eel? Hi. Nandeshoka. While it's true that humans value their sleep, it wouldn't be safe for someone to suddenly pass out, then maybe bump their head on the ground, right? That would be dangerous, so going forward, I would appreciate it if you took that into consideration. Would that explanation suffice? But what exactly did his silence mean? Normally, Eel was all smiles, so when he became stone-faced, I had no idea what he was thinking. Wow! Uh, okay, that's right. Excellent. He grasped what I was telling him. With a sense of relief, I stretched out my arms, after which Ignis said something with a yawn. I feel like he did. <laughs> yeah, you were right. Too right, almost. Maybe we need to reassess things. It was really fortunate that no one got hurt. Just sure good luck. But if our fortunes turned... For now, it was nothing more than a what-if scenario, but still, it came to mind. While thinking such things, I went to Rendo and bowed at him slightly. I'm sorry about this, Rendo. I'm sure it takes a lot of work to mobilize the GPM. Ah, yeah, it's fine. Actually, you said that, I was able to take care of the attention of my attention to my attention. No, I was the careless one here, or so it seems. But without even going that far, GPM is a government organization, so we can't keep bugging them. As I was deep in conversation with Rendo, I overheard a conversation that was going on concurrently behind me. Why お前の世間知らずを承知で連れ出したんだからな。ですそうミン。監督責任。おお、なお。ああ、ありがとうございます。イオンレアン。ああ、ありがとうございます。イオンレアン。ああ、ありがとうございます。イオンレアン。ああ
I overheard a running faucet. It seemed she was in the kitchen tidying things up after dinner. Slowly, I continued. I tiptoed towards the kitchen. <laughs> Something had pulled my collar from behind, forcibly halting me in place. I had sensed no physical force, but rather a magical manipulation of space. There was only one being other than myself capable of such magic. Gora, Gora, stop. As expected, it was Mazir. Ch-違います。私はただここでおとなしく待ってな。コーヒー。ああ、カフェラテ入れてほしいな。なら片付けが終わるまで待たなきゃね。いえ、ですから。He <laughs> misunderstood my objective completely. However, I had no time to explain, and he forcibly sat me down at the stool beside the counter. With that parting gift, Mazir fled the room, shutting the gate behind. I had been giving clear instructions not to enter, so I had no choice. What is he, a robot? Like, what? All I could do was wait here for Kotone to come out. Okay, thanks you two. It seems I had erred, for Kotone was not alone. Connus and Ignis kept her company. Judging by the tone of voice, they were assisting her with the cleaning. For some reason, I was assailed by a dull knock of emptiness. So awkward. With that, I marched back to my room. There, I rest my cheek upon the hammock, which I, which lay in place of a bed. That's so awesome. I want that. Normally, I would immediately pick up a nearby game console and start up an oldie man game, but at the moment, it felt like a hollow pursuit. Flashback. In open public spaces, I had been forbidden from singing divine hymns. If only they had told me earlier, I wouldn't have erred so egregiously. However, where could I have obtained such information? I hadn't been here in ten years. Such matters were no of no consequence before. When Soan was still alive, this place... Enchanté was my world. I once believed one of my games to be the cornerstone of my emotional education. Once in a while, Ignis would drag me out, or I'd venture outside with Sawan, but no matter what occurred, it was swiftly dealt with, and no such criticism had been levied at me. Which is why I had no need to learn of that world outside, nor did I have any interest. But now it's different. Ever since Kotone arrived, my curiosity in the outside world blossomed. I sought knowledge outside of my comfort zone. But my fervor, in tandem with my carelessness, caused considerable trouble for Kotone. Not only had she escorted to something I insisted upon seeing, I repaid her kindness by foisting responsibility onto her. These cryptic feelings stirred tirelessly within me, so I sought to comfort by nervously caressing my limited addiction figurine. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't say that with a straight face. Ugh. The means and process to purchase such goods was well recorded, so I learned it immediately. Over and over, Rindo, Ignis, and the others instructed me to do so. However, no matter how many internet pages I passed through, I found no such documents. I hadn't a clue what to reference. What were sense and sensibility? How had they differed from manners? What things are allowed to be done? What things are subject to punishment? What helps others adapt to the human world as if it were nothing? And... 
このアンシャンテで取り残されているのでしょう。Oh, that's sad. Kotone is a good human. She politely listened to what I have to say and took me to places at my request. Causing trouble for her was no admirable act. That I at least I understood. Or that at least I understood. <clears throat> Then, going forward, to avoid repeating the same thing, was it best for me to refrain from ever asking her to take me outside? Ah, k a r e n a r a こういう時どう反応するのだろう He. Whoa! What? いる入っても構わぬだろうか A voice at the door interrupted me while deep in thought. This low, piercing voice belonged to Kanas. Had he finished, finished assisting Kotone? I had no particular reason to refuse him entry. Come in, I returned through the door. Oh. ああ。失礼する。夕食時のお前の様子が少々気にかかってろ。その今回の件についてだが、あまり気に合うな。ああ、カーナス。無論お前自身が己を見直す必要はある。だが、偏った対応を取ってきた我々にもそれなりの責任